Wow. <laughs> Yo, let me get DB to do the honors, man. Our next guest right here, man. He 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 needs the Oscar red carpet type of introduction Facts. for what he represents for our generation and and, and beyond. Yeah. DB, let him know who we got up in here. Well, I think we have to go back to the beginning because all of his accomplishments all of his accomplishments may not have happened if him and Marlon Wayans, I saw the video that Marlon posted <laughs> of them in high school. I think you were at like a dance or a prom or that something like prom. that. Prom. And uh, so it's Marlon and Omar in high school at their prom, bigging up each other, predicting that they were going to be rich. He even starts the video out. He's like, yo, what's up? My name is Omar. I'm going to be rich one day. <laughs> <laughs> So I think, I think when you look at that manifestation, I think he definitely hit it spot on because, I mean, look at it, loving basketball. I got my DVD. I told him outside I wore my pumps because, I you know, I watch him in juice in that opening scene. I should have got a baby Ruth, you know what I'm saying, like Steelhead. <laughs> but we can go on and on and on. I, I've done this introduction so many times, and I love it every time. But now he's back here today talking about his new book, Nubia, The Awakening, mm -hmm. and it's out today. Please go pick that up, and please give your uh, warm respect and uh, appreciation and a big round of applause for Omar Epps, friend and family of Sway in the Morning. There you go. Oh! What up, family? What up, folks? No. Hey, oh, oh, when you and Heather was growing up. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Here you go. I know Me the old Heather. You know the old Heather? Heather. Heather. Yo, yo, what, 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 like, what, did y'all ever get into any fights, like friend fights, brother sister fights? Nah, nah, we never got into it like that. I mean, Plus, she got two crazy ass brothers. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah the fight used to be with him and my brother. They would literally <laughs> be playing video games. I wake up in the morning, come out the living room, NBK, NBA 2K Jams, it's yeah, NBA, NBA Jams. Yeah. yeah. NBA Jams. If you look at the All Glocks Down video, you go back. That's Omar in the video playing the game in my living room because that's yep. all him and my brother used to do. Wow. Yep. Yep. Damn, Omar. Eat food. We used. I used to cook yep. back then. Everybody just come over. We well, was neighbors. What was your family though when you was at her house? She never <laughs> talks about that side. <laughs> well, you know. My family was back in Brooklyn back in them times, and this was when I was out in Jersey. Mm -hmm. You know, you get the little starter kit. Uh huh. Jersey City apartment. apartment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the starter kit. To yeah. Jersey City oh, apartment. Oh, Latifa. Everybody was in like the same building. I was down the street. Yep. Wow. Yep. I was Big Bub. Big. From today. Wow. Big Bub from today. Yes, you're right. Do you Shout want him? Do you <laughs> want me? Yo, that's crazy. Wow. Yeah. We got I, history. Yeah. Got it. I love that clip. Uh. Uh. Well, that that moment that um. DB was talking about uh, in terms of manifest manifestation. You you know you and Marlon having these dreams, man. I think people don't necessarily um, believe in manifestation until it happens to them. Mm. How many times has that happened to you? You said I'm gonna be rich. Now you're rich. You know, whether it's monetarily or for whatever you, the happiness. I was about to say my accountant would beg the, to the, differ. Yo, 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 I saw the look in your eye. You was like, oh, that's why. What do you put out? Nah, but you know, you're rich, man. You're yeah, rich. Yeah, yeah. Um, manifestation, when did you really take hold of that and realize that that could be a tool to get what you want? That's a great question. For me, um, I never really had a choice. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the, the way I grew up and um, the things that, that my mother just instilled in me, um, a sense of purpose, a sense of value, and um, there was no other options. Like, all right, we already here, so the only way to go could be that way. Uh -huh. You know, and so, yeah, I'm a young kid. I was, I was probably... 16 in that video, uh -huh. you know, um, talking about, oh, I'm going to be rich, this, that, and the other. But the thing that I want kids to know and people to know is, but I put in the work, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was yeah. the secret the whole time. Like, yeah, this could look like this, mm -hmm. but I'm putting in the work. Uh -huh. While y'all sleep, I'm up working, you know? And and then you have to put yourself in the positions to have the opportunities to for it to manifest, uh -huh, you uh -huh. know? But it's all it's all blessings from from the most high. You know? when, when I look at like Jonathan Ma John Ma Jonathan Majors or uh, uh, Michael B. Jordan, mm -hmm. you know, these younger dudes, I, I think of you, you mm -hmm. know? I, I see you. That's dope, yo. I, don't, I never thought about that. Why not, though? Yeah. Like, you were everywhere on every screen for us. You have been your mm -hmm. entire career. Yeah. You know, when Facts. you see their careers, is it something you want to say to them? As you see this star rising, just kind of like cautionary tales or information you want to give them, what would you say to them? Yeah, I mean, I admire all of those, all of the young brothers. And when we meet face to face, you know, whatever's on my spirit in that moment, I, uh -huh. I'll share with them. But they doing it, man. They doing it. They, they, you know, they got different opportunities. And talk about a Michael B. Jordan or rest in peace of Chadwick or 
You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. th- these young cats is they on it. Do they know? say what they say to you when they see you? It's a lot of love and respect, yo. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And it feels good. Mm-hmm. It feels good because, you know, the only person in in terms of in the acting world, the only person I ever wanted to impress was Sidney Poitier. And when I had the chance to meet him the first time, he knew the fact that he even knew who I was. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, I won. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yo, I won. won. Yeah. You know, right. And I know for the younger mm-hmm. crowd, y'all might not know who that is, but like, think of it like this, like. They, in basketball terms, right? Is there's MJ, and it was Kobe, uh-huh. and there's LeBron. You know what I'm saying? And Sidney Poitier was MJ. Sidney Poitier was MJ. Mm. What did he say to you, O? He said, he said, cause I didn't. He was eating, right? Uh huh. And you know how that is. Like, yeah. I don't yeah. want to be one of those people walking. <laughs> those. Eating, but I'm sitting there like I'm never gonna, probably gonna have this moment again. Mm-hmm. So I just went over there like. Sorry, sir. I don't mean to, you know, disturb your meal, but you know, my name is Omar Epps. I'm, I'm an actor, and and he said, I know who you are, son. You do great work, mm. and that just blew. I'm talking about an explosion. I was just like, oh, I'm about to get busy. It's like, you know, it, 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 if you play basketball, if your favorite player <laughs> knows you play ball and they like, yo, you nice. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're like, oh, word. So the next practice is going to be ill. Uh huh. My hero said, I'm nice. Well, what was the oh, next no? film after you met him? You know, that's a good question. Um, I think that was right around like the time of the, the wood or something like that. Wow. The wood. Right around that time. Yo, you well, delivered damn. on the wood too. Yeah, yeah. That's when it went up another notch. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yo, who was the, because uh, I know Marlon, everybody's friends, you know, um, Alan Payne, everybody's friends, yeah. right? But everybody has to audition around yeah. that time. Yeah. Who did you audition up against the most out of all the people you know? Marlon. Marlon. Yeah, because yeah. when we wow. were in high school, right, they used to have these commercials, the United Negro College Fund. Mm-hmm. Remember those? <laughs> and those were like the little quick commercial you could get. And me and Marlon would always go up against each other, and he would always get it. And I was like, that's all right. That's because you light skin. <laughs> 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 but, um, but you know, and then we both, um, as soon as we both got out of school, we booked our first movies. You know, I booked Juice, and uh, he booked Mo Money. Mm. And we've been, we've been on the road. That's crazy. Damn, B, but Juice was your first. By the time you was... Man, you was acting in Juice like you've been acting. Uh, like that was like your tenth project. The way you was, the way you were. You seem like the experienced actor in Dead Juice. Ass. You know, um, and I think, uh, I think that's what stood out to a lot of us. And and just, I I hear you tell so many Tupac stories, man, and I love <laughs> hearing them every time. But uh, to see what you're doing now, when I think a newbie, a big round of applause. This yeah. man got an author. Thank you. He just EP'd a movie. We just came to the movie premiere in Jersey, and Tracy was screaming out loud. <laughs> what up? <laughs> That's what you want in a theater. And, and, and now, now we add author um, to the title. Omar Epps is here, and it's just, to me, you're a testament. It's, it's, it's no limitations to what we can accomplish. And when I read Nubia, um, it's such a smooth, easy read. Yeah. I mean, after the first chapter, I was like, they're going for the movie. Heather read it before me. <laughs> what was your thoughts, HB? Well, congratulations, Thank first you. off. And I told, oh, like, I'm not talking to you about this again until we see each other in person because uh-huh. I didn't want to ask so many questions. But, Sway, you brought up an interesting point about manifestation in high school, which brings me to the book. I thought about the powers, which feel like superpowers that all of these kids have, tapping into, like, this thing that we all have inside of us. So what's the, the synopsis of the book as you see it? But I'm not telling. Oh, okay, but, but you say all these it's, kids. It's high school. To okay. a high school in the future. Okay. Um, kids, to me, finding their their powers, finding their inner strength, and just like which we all have, by the way. Yeah. Like we all have it, and I wish this book was out when I was in high school yeah. because it it tells the story of these kids and drugs, lifestyle, uh, community, family choices to make it is everything in here but in the future and the entire time i'm reading this i'm like i'm not gonna tell y'all which character i think oh wrote about himself but <laughs> <laughs> i think you are in this to me in some kind of way but um it's brilliant and and to sway's Thank point you. 
I was just like, I'm in a movie right now. Like, I'm watching a movie, and the, the sequel, I can't wait for it. You know what I mean? This how vivid it was. How long did it take you to start building out the characters and the concept? When did you really start this? I know when the book is out today, but yeah. when did you start this? It was over 10 years ago um, that I had the... Um, Damn. Yeah, the, the, the initial idea came from a very simple thought that I had, because we live in a tumultuous world and all of that. And I was like, one day I was like, what if love itself was illegal and then reborn through this 14 year old kid who doesn't know that he is love? And then I just, you know, you go down one rabbit hole that takes you to another, yeah. takes you to another. And so we built that. So it took uh, my co pilot and I, my co writer, Clarence, Clarence A. Haynes, it took us uh, three and a half years um, to write the book. And we really wanted, um, I, I love. Uh, everything you just said, Heather, because that's the essence of, you know, the core of the book is about unity uh -huh. and about hope. And we're trying to leave a breadcrumb trail for this younger generation uh -huh. um, to unify. Uh -huh. And what you call superpowers, I call gifts. Uh -huh. There's a gift within each one of us. It's just up to us to un unroot it, unveil it, you know? Uh -huh. And, um, and so, so basically, it's like the story is about these three teenage kids, right? Who, you know, we all been teenagers. That's yeah. just awkward, you know. <laughs> but but and they're dis they're displaced. They're displaced people. It takes place in uh, 2098. So climate change has ravaged the earth. Uh -huh. um, it's set in New York because that's where I'm born and raised. So that's what I know, like the back of my hand, uh -huh. uh, geographically speaking. And um, these kids are just trying to figure it out, right? But at, in their adolescence, these gifts start to come out and they don't know their ancestral gifts mm -hmm. and they don't know what it is because their parents haven't told them of their true ancestry mm -hmm. right because the parents thought that the gifts of the nubian people died with the land mm -hmm. you know and so they're di displaced out here so and then it's it's really about like you know what is each one of these kids going to do with mm -hmm. their gift you know so good it's, it's, it's give it a round of applause because that that was a that, that's, and, and, and the whole because immediately I thought of you know um, the 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 transatlantic. Well, I thought of Black folks in America, yeah. right, being detached from you know their roots mm -hmm. and coming to a foreign place yep. and being that that happened. That's how I think. You know, the the religion, the language, the love, all these different things were stripped, and then years later they're starting to uh, uh, refine their their heritage. But this actually can apply to more than just black people Absolutely. in America, mm -hmm. right? This Absolutely. could go to anybody's uh, struggle, exactly. you know, from any ethnicity that has been, uh, you know, detached from their roots and from their upbringing and from their ancestral inheritance and all of these different things. So yep. I start seeing it even broader. One of the things I appreciated is how you guys remapped Manhattan. Crazy. That, shit, that was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. To 2059, I think it is. What it would look it's like. It's brilliant. Back to, how did y'all come up with that? Because it's like, it, I, I, I look at it like this. Like, when you're telling a story, this was a big learning lesson for me. Um, I've never written a novel before. I wrote From Folks, Father to yeah. Fatherhood. Mm -hmm. and that's my story. I, you know, that's. Mm -hmm. But this is creating an entire world. And I say that to say every speckle of dust every molecule of air has to have a purpose yes mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? Yes. yes so it's like when we really okay this is cool this is a big concept but when you start to really beat it out it has to everything has to make sense so that's where the things like the map come about and what you were referring to is like there's sort of a um there's a there's a couple of pages in the beginning of the book that tells the reader, okay, these monumental events that have happened, uh -huh. you know, to, you know, twenty fifty something, twenty sixty, and then the book starts when it's twenty ninety eight. Yeah, you know, and it's really to to get a person's mind, like, okay, I can see that, you know, uh -huh. or or now you're telling me this, okay, that's what it is, and this is like this these are the rules of this world. Yes, uh -huh. you yeah. know what I mean. Uh -huh. Setting up the yeah, you know, and then you dive in, and and it, you know that was it was challenging, but it was fun because I feel like Nubia the Awakening is a necessary story. It needs to be told. You know, this is you just said something, Heather, that I've been saying, which is that this is a book that I wish I had 
around when I was 15, 16. Yeah. Or something yeah. Like. But why? Because it, you know what? It takes you on a journey. You learn a lot of things, but as a reader, you escape. Mm -hmm. It literally takes you to a different place. And for the kids out there, like, that's an important thing. Like, of course, you learn from reading, but you can also escape for that one or two hours uh -huh. that you sit down and read. And then you gain a, a, a different, you get inspired, you know, depending on what you're reading, you know, that can, you can bring those things back to into your real life and mm -hmm. help you get by that moment, you know, get by to this next moment. Now you go read another few chapters and you see what I'm saying? Yeah. What, what I loved about it before Tracy jump in. The reason why I wish that I would have had it, and I know a lot of kids, <clears throat> excuse me, if you are a person that deals with dreams and visions and energy around you, and nobody's explaining that to you, but you know it's a real thing, this sort of lets you know it's okay to be different. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be tapped in, even though that your parents are not explaining your ancestry to you. That's what I thought about when I read this book. Mm. I was always a young kid with a lot of dreams and a lot of visions, and I felt energy around me and spirits around me all my life. I didn't know what to call them. Right. I didn't know what it was, but I used to feel crazy. This book allows the kids right now today to, ha you ain't crazy. Like, it's a real thing. That's, to me, was the golden nugget in this book. Good job, oh, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's you wasn't fire. crazy. You just got gifts you didn't understand. Gifts I didn't understand. <laughs> that's all. You got a little crazy in you, but that's But we all have that sway. <laughs> she got the jersey crazy. She got that jersey crazy. Uptown Anthem, baby. Yo, Freddie's on the line from Cali. Freddie, what What's up? What's up, Freddie? Hey, Freddie. Hey, guys. Uh, first time caller. And uh, when uh, you opened up the show with that, uh, that scene from Power, I had to tell you a story. I was crying one night, and I and I and I've always been a fan of Omar. And man, you've just evolved as an actor, and you had me crying because I was going through that same scene, finding out that I had a son. Wow. And my girl came in, and she was like, "Why are you crying?" I said, "Omar, such a good actor." <laughs> Thank you. And man. I just wanted to say, man, you're you, you're such a great actor, and I and I'm in awe. I'm okay. I'm definitely buying the book today. Yes. Thank you. Brother. Get that I book. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Hey, Parents, oh. get it for your, your your kids too. Get it. Hey, oh, oh absolutely. Yeah, hey, Freddie. Uh, when he's speaking about the scene when uh, Detective Howard told Kanan that he's his father. Yeah. Yo, when you first yeah. read that scene, mm -hmm. what went through your head when you knew this was happening? Um, I was. It like, was just. Uh, it was not, like, not, it not, was not you, Freddie. Oh, <laughs> not you, Freddie. Oh, oh. oh you done, Freddie. Freddie. You're a citizen, Freddie. You get get out of here. Get the book, Freddie. Get out of there. Yo, that's that. Yo, this is what I do it for. That's deep what this brother just said, man. Yeah. He going through this in real life, and maybe that was him seeing that scene was a form of catharsis for him mm -hmm. to help mm. him get through the situation. But when I first read the scene, this is what I'm saying, man. I'm, I'm like, oh, people are going to go crazy for this. Like I could already see the reactions. <laughs> <laughs> and the, my favorite part about that scene, shout out to Makai Curtis, who plays Kanan, wonderful young actor, he just laughed, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> These are the things that's not in the script. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. This is his, him and his own talent, and we just dancing. And I, I, I it took me so much not to laugh Great at his character. laugh. Yeah. Because that was just so real. Like, yeah. oh, he start laughing. He start like, laughing. <laughs> <laughs> like, that slow laugh. Yeah. <laughs> that was a dope scene, man. Yeah. He yeah. ain't know whether to slap people, you or hug you. <laughs> yeah. People went crazy on social after, you know, after that. Oh, they went nuts. People went crazy, man. Raising Canaan is um an incredible opportunity for me. Um, I'm thankful. You know, shout out to Fifth, of course, Courtney Kemp, Sasha Penn. Tina Miller, who I think is, I think she's the best actress. Sure. Period. Like, yeah. For yeah. real, for real. Wow. This woman just did Broadway, ran a marathon, raising a kid, and killing it on set. Like, what can't you do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, whoever these voting bodies are, give that woman her trophies. Mm. Give her her trophies. The big ones. There you go. You know what I'm saying? Those, the so, ones that start with the first letter of your name. <laughs> <laughs> you got a rap? Okay. I know you got to go. Oh, I'm getting a rap finger from your whole team. <laughs> Tracy, real quick. Go. Boom. Go. All right, quick. Yo, well, okay. All you right, take go. up my time. Go. <laughs> I'm going back.
that too when we were mentioning gifts i think a lot of times people be very specific with a gift where let's just say for instance you're like i want to become an actor but then as you get older you realize no this is more expansive it's a storyteller because maybe some doors close in, in acting when did you realize that your gift was actually more expansive and it took up the space of storytelling Ooh, that's a great question um I've always been telling stories. Though. I've been writing since I was like eight, nine years old. It started out with like poetry and then it went to, you know, raps, of course, mm -hmm. and all of that. I used to write short stories, um, stuff like that. And um, acting became an extension of that. Mm -hmm. So that's how I really got bit by that bug because I, I had to find a different way to express these things. And then, um, you know, I've, I've been fortunate to have a, a, a long career. Yeah. Because writing takes time. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it's really about, to me, it's like the 360 is coming back around and really um, having a discipline um, and the time to sit down. And that, that's the odd thing about uh, how things happen. Like like I said, we started this writing process for Nubia The Awakening right before the pandemic. And then we was locked down. Yeah. So, so we can't. So we got the time to really hit it, you yeah. know, and that's what we did. So. I want to encourage all our our citizens to pick up this book, Nubia, The Awakening. It's such a great read. It's crazy. Thank you. you guys did really well. Shout out to your uh, co-writer, Clarence A. Haynes, yeah. as hey. well. Your whole team here <clears throat> been really professional and not really sweating us on the extra few minutes. So I appreciate that. Um, and congratulations on Power Book 3, Raising Canaan. Yeah. Yo, you keep killing them, oh, We yeah. love you, brother. Love you, love you more. We man. love you, man. You a national institution in yourself, brother. Thank you, brother. Come on, man. Omar Epps. Omar Epps. Omar, Omar Epps. Epps. Yeah.